Uh, Galileo, of course, is probably one of the most famous scientists of all time, but a great deal of his fame rests on the fact that he was put on trial by the Catholic Church in 1633, and this is often treated as being one of the paradigmatic cases of persecution of scientists by the Church. But the story of Galileo is a great deal more complicated than that, and it turns out that uh, his trial had much more to do uh, with the Pope's prestige than it did about scientific results that Galileo was putting forward. Until about 1610, Galileo had been a moderately successful professor of mathematics at the University of Padua. But in 1610, he heard about a new invention from the Netherlands, uh, the telescope, and he quickly made one himself. And being a clever chap, he was able to make a telescope which was probably better than any other in the world at the time. And immediately he decided that he was going to point it at the sky and have a look at the stars and planets and see if he could see anything which hadn't been seen before. And he was absolutely amazed by the detail that the telescope showed about the structure of the stars and the structure of the planets. For instance, he was able to see things like the phases of Venus. He noticed that Saturn had ears, which later turned out, of course, to be rings. He saw that the surface of the moon was covered in craters and mountains, and it wasn't the smooth orb that it was always supposed to have been. And this meant that the heavens were, to put it bluntly, much more interesting than traditional philosophy had allowed. Traditionally, the heavens were thought of as being perfect, that they functioned according to immutable and very simple laws, um, and that it was even made of a special fifth element which wasn't subject to friction or decay. In other words, the heavens were supposed to be completely different from Earth. And Galileo, through his telescope, could see that the moon, for instance, appeared to be quite earthly, in that it had features such as hills and valleys that you, you see on Earth. Now, all of this was very exciting, but it wasn't all that controversial. Galileo was able to put out his book, The Sidereal Messenger, in 1610, and immediately became a scientific superstar in Europe, probably the first one. Galileo was one of the very few people in Europe who, as early as 1610, believed that Copernicus, who published his great book, The Revolutions of the Heavenly Spheres, in 1543, was actually right to say that the Earth is going around the Sun and not the other way around. Very, very few people, including almost all scientists of the time, thought that Copernicus was correct about this. And actually, you can see why. As far as we can tell, standing on it, the Earth doesn't appear to be moving at all. It's very difficult to prove that the Earth is in motion and all the other stars are so far away that they don't seem to move relative to us. And all of that implies that the Earth should be stationary. But Galileo didn't believe that. He found that his new telescopic discoveries backed him up with that idea, and in particular that the phases of Venus, that's to say that Venus had uh, phases like the Moon, it could be waxing and waning, supported the idea that Venus in particular was going around the Sun. It didn't seem to be that big a leap that the Earth could be as well. Now, at the time, Copernicus was not terribly significant. His mathematical work was respected, but as I said, very few people believe that he was right. But Galileo started going around and telling people that he believed that Copernicus had been correct. And incidentally, he explained why he thought that was okay from a religious point of view, and that the parts of the Bible which suggest that the Earth is stationary can simply be read in a figurative way. Now, that wasn't an outlandish position either, because if you read the Bible of a completely literalistic mindset, you might think that it's saying that the Earth is flat. And certainly some of the figures of speech which are used suggest that. But of course, even in Galileo's time and throughout the Middle Ages, everybody knew that the Earth was in fact a sphere, and they were perfectly happy to read the 
language of the Bible in a figurative way when it used terms like the four corners of the world. Galileo noted that there were parts of the Bible that did strongly imply that the earth was stationary. For instance, in Ecclesiastes it says, the sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place it rose, which suggests that the sun is going around the earth. While in Psalm 103 he found, God laid the foundations of the earth that it should not be moved forever. Now those sorts of passages did imply that the earth was stationary, but they could of course be read as being poetic rather than factual. At the same time, some theologians, not scientists like Galileo, were making the same sorts of suggestions. Galileo could really say what he liked. He wasn't really important enough for anyone to take all that much notice, but the Catholic Church did feel that when its own theologians were making these sorts of assertions, it had to make up its mind where it stood. In 1616, a commission was formed by the Catholic Church in Rome to decide where it stood on the question of whether the Earth was going around the Sun or not. In coming to its decision on this, a decision which of course it got completely and utterly wrong, the Catholic Church took advice from the foremost natural philosophers and scientists of the time. And at the time, pretty much everybody who knew what they were talking about thought that the Earth was indeed the stationary centre of the universe. That was the scientifically correct theory at the time. Galileo was in a very small minority. Now, of course, the Catholic Church had no business to be pronouncing on scientific questions. However, it did feel that if it took the correct scientific advice, it would be able to um, set out uh, some guidance for the theologians who were suggesting about the, how the Bible should be interpreted in the light of Copernicus's thought. So in 1616, the Catholic Church very unfortunately decided that the Earth was at the centre of the universe and that the Bible should be read literally on these particular points. Galileo himself was assured at the time that he himself had done nothing wrong. The power behind the Vatican throne, Cardinal Robert Bellarmine personally assured Galileo that he was in no danger from the Inquisition. However, he was warned that he should stop trying to persuade people that Copernicus was correct. Now, Galileo wasn't happy about this because he, of course, thought rightly, that the church had been wrong. Now, over the next 20 years or so, he slowly but surely tried to get the church to change its mind. Now, that's not an easy thing to do. The Catholic Church is notoriously slow about changing its mind on anything. And unfortunately, Galileo just didn't have the diplomatic skills which were required to persuade the church to correct its mistake. But he did have one enormous advantage. He was extremely good friends with the new Pope, Pope Urban VIII. Now, Pope Urban VIII considered himself to be a bit of a philosopher as well. And he met with Galileo on several occasions, and they reportedly got on terribly well. And Galileo asked the Pope if it would be OK to write a book which compared the traditional and the Copernican systems of astronomy. So he would compare and contrast the theories of whether or not the Earth was going around the Sun or the other way around. And the Pope seemed to concur that this was something that Galileo could do without breaking any of the rules. So Galileo went home and he started writing his very famous book, The Dialogue on Two World Systems. Now, in that book, purportedly, he was treating the traditional and the new system of astronomy with equal weight. But in actual fact, it turned out that he was acting as a persuader for Copernicus, and he was making the traditional system of astronomy, which had been first promulgated by the Greek astronomer Ptolemy in the 2nd century AD, look absolutely ridiculous. The book was a dialogue between three individuals. An individual who was supporting the traditional astronomy was called Simplicius. Now that is a 
name of an ancient Greek philosopher and consequently could just about be acceptable, but it's very clear what Galileo thinks of his opinions. And then, even worse than that, at the very end of the book, Galileo puts an argument of the Pope into the mouth of Simplicius and makes it very clear that he thinks it's ridiculous. And this is something the Pope had actually told Galileo during their discussions, which was essentially that whatever you saw from the movements of the heavens through your telescope or through observations, God could have arranged things any way he liked. So it wasn't possible for an uh, earthbound astronomer to come to any firm conclusions about how the heavens were working. Galileo thought this was a very bad argument and made it very clear in his book. However, when he sent the book into the censor, which of course was necessary in those days in order to get a book published in Italy, the censor believed that he had permission from the Pope to publish the book. And so the Catholic Church actually signed off on Galileo's book before it was published. So when it was published, the Pope duly received his copy and he read it. And he found that he was being made a fool of by Galileo. Now Galileo might have thought he was a friend of the Pope, but of course he was really just a client of the Pope. The Pope was effectively a Renaissance prince. He got some prestige from patronising scientists like Galileo, but he certainly couldn't afford to be seen to allowing them to get out of line. So when he'd read the book and saw what Galileo had done with his own point of view, he was absolutely furious. And he demanded that Galileo was extradited from Florence to Rome and put on trial. Now this was quite an embarrassing situation for the Vatican because of course the Inquisition censor had already passed the book. So the church was effectively putting Galileo on trial for writing a book that it had al 